our number one job with an exhibit is to give them the story, okay. to have the resources to pass over the story, yep. because the stuff is worthless without the story, mm -hmm. yep. and, the, and the stories aren't as good without, I say stuff, with the 3D objects. Hey everyone, this is Kirk, and thank you for joining Seth and I on today's episode of The Flea. Um, today we are joined by Mark Holland. Um, he is the archivist for the Canton McKinley Museum. Um, and the Canton, Canton McKinley Museum and the Hartville Marketplace, uh, we've had a great um, relationship over the past few years. Um, it's important that all of the businesses in Stark County um, stick together and help promote within each other. Um, and so Mark has graciously taken time today to, to spend some time with Seth and I, talk about some cool things that are going on at the museum, and to learn a little bit more about our 25th president William McKinley. So let's just go ahead and jump into the conversation with Mark. So Mark, you got you you got all your archives. You got the stuff at the, in the museum. You got all this great stuff, right? Yes. What would what and not not a monetary value, but what one piece would you say has the most sig historical significance out of everything that the museum has? That's not an an That's not a uh, that's not a question I can answer because it is so vast. If you would. If you would come in and, and spend an afternoon of what we have, both the, what we call the 3D objects mm -hmm. that Kate Berger, Bergert, excuse me, that she takes care of, right, and and in the archives that I am in charge of, um, and many volunteers, um, you'd have to get to know it. It's a it's a that's a very it, that's a trivial. Kind it of it thing. is. It's kind I, of one of my favorites is the rocking McKinley's rocking chair that's up on the yes. on the second floor. I'm that's, glad you mentioned that because I was thinking about that when I first sat down here. You know that's you know it's it because there's a picture of McKinley in the rocking chair on his front porch when yes. he was when he was in Canton and just you know just to think that you know President McKinley sat there and that was his chair and you can see the 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 wear on the arms and on the on the, mm -hmm. on the seat where he would have. I don't know. I just I always think the rocking chair is is you, super you didn't cool. sit in that, did you? Kirk? I touched the arm of it and I reached. over over because I have long arms and I did. Oh, wow. Did the alarm go Please off? Please don't let anyone know. No, it didn't. Okay. But, uh, wow. I wiped it off, though. That is a fascinating story because my memory of that is that it just walked in in 2015 and they said, we think it's it it's, was William McKinley's. 2015? Okay. That's, a, I mean... 2015, yeah. Wow. So, so somebody it, had it in their... Well, you're going to tell us a story. The provenance right? of it is that, um, and that's a fancy thing called. Uh, that's a fancy word for. Where did this come from? Yeah. Who owned it? How did it go from the original buyer or maker or whatever it is? Like if it's a letter, who wrote it? Right. That's the beginning of it, and then how did it make it to our museum? Right. How, how did people bring it in? And the provenance is that. What's that stuff in the middle? How did it get there? How can we authenticate it that it was really William McKinley's? Well, the story goes that I started to talk with people, and of course you guys know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. It's yep. the networking. Yep. Mm -hmm. That ended up being a picture. You know, I don't know very much, so. Well. Right, right Kirk? Yeah, please continue, Mark. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, we have that picture in our collection, but at the time we could not find it. We couldn't just pull it up. Now yeah. today we can because of that. That's stuff happens organically, and mm -hmm. we and it comes to our attention, and we pay a lot of attention to the artifact, that piece, and that like like the what I'm referring to now is the photograph of him that's displayed there of him sitting actually in sitting in chair. that rocker. Yes, and. It ended up being at the McKinley, what what is what was the McKinley Grand Hotel downtown on mm -hmm. Market on South Market. Oh, okay. And they had that picture in the McKinley Grand in their ballroom, okay. one of their ballrooms. So I went down and I talked to them, and and they told me what they knew, and I came back and I Googled it, and I I believe I found it, and then eventually I found it in our collection, and. I scanned it, and then the curator, Kim, at the time, and I looked at it as we, 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 um, we zoomed in on the rocker part, and we could see, I don't know what the, 
what the technical terms, but we could see like the defects mm-hmm. or, okay. the, yeah. or the nails or something. Right. But according, according to us, we feel that that is the that is rocker in the picture. So where did these people come up? Where did they find it? They claimed that they were they were family members, and I like I say, well, okay. I, I'm not saying they so are. So somehow maybe got passed down the line or something it got passed like that, down the line. and then that was their story. That wow. was their that was their provenance. Wow. See, now, and that's that's a cool thing about like I mean, people think that all this stuff is, you know, you're not going to be able to find any of this stuff. You don't. You never know what what is going to come about or what you're going to find and what you're going to. I mean, you never know we what's going to come in the we door. We talked about the the clock in there, you know. And, yes, the Duber Hampton, the Duber Hampton clock, you know, and that 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 story. Yeah, you know, I don't. I mean, you could probably elaborate a little bit on it, but sure. Um, somehow that that was um, that deal was made kind of at the flea market, our flea market here. It was right? absolutely. Um, and speaking of deal, it was George Deal, who okay. was the president of the Historical Society at oh, the time. Wow. Wow. We have a... That interesting. We, that do you guys... Uh, have you guys ever heard of a VHS tape? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, video Safari always made you rewind it or you got fined. Video <laughs> Safari. <laughs> Look at this guy. Ticks me off. <laughs> yeah. What, what was the... Kirk, what did they say? Be kind. And rewind. There you go. <laughs> that doesn't date us at all. Good job. We, <laughs> we have a VHS tape of a talk at... The museum, and you can see the, I can show you the, uh, the curtain in the background to prove it. But this gentleman is giving a talk on how we got the Duper Hampton, wa- uh, Duper Hampton clock yeah. that was on the campus of Duper Hampton on West Tuscarawas in the tower that went down early in the 70s, or in the 60s, excuse me. Um, and... Someone kept that clock, someone who, who was doing the demo, and it was supposed to be in a garage. And, and I believe we have the, we, we tracked down like the address of the garage where they physically took it. There was a, a guy on site, he was in charge of the demo, and he was in charge of taking that tower down, but taking that works out. And his boss said, put it in my he, he, these were contractors from out of town. Put it in my house that I'm that I'm renting. Hmm. Put it in the garage, and Stork. it was there for a while. And it it may have passed through several hands. It may not have, um, but it ended up in one of your what do you, what do you call the people that one of your vendors vendors, vendors. vendors yep one of your vendors outside. The story was that it was outside, and we're talking about the old school. This could be the one. What's the what's the crossroads that where it was? Oh, uh, where Sheets Sheets is now, the old flea market. Oh, over at the old flea market. Yeah, the the yeah over on Market possible. Avenue in in six nineteen here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. that was the eighties. Yeah, yeah. At least. just down the street. Yeah. So it was at the old open market, Hartville Flea Market, and it wasn't that the guy had it here. It wasn't that the vendor had it here, but George Deal, the president was talking with this vendor, and they got to talking back and forth, and George Deal mentioned the clock, and the vendor said, I have it in my garage. No way. That's crazy. And, he, and so then there was a campaign of getting it, of, of raising funds, and then there was a, a clock club that came in that restores clocks yeah. like that, and they spent many hours, uh, many well, I don't know how long the process was, but restored it to what it is today. Oh, and it looks ama- it looks amazing in there. It does. Like, I mean, I I would love to have that in the top of my house or something like that. Don't you think that would be kind of sweet? If you live in a bell tower, or something. <laughs> I don't know. No, I would I would have to say. I mean, in in part of it is you know just that story. You know that that is one of my favorite pieces there. But you know there, you know people don't realize what all you guys have. You know, they don't the, even realize they, we're here. They Seth. don't even realize yeah, you're in the backyard. That's true. Not at all. You know, so you know, my, my actually my son came home. He went to field trip there a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And he came home, and he goes, "Dad, that <laughs> museum is awesome." He's like, "Can you take me tomorrow?" <laughs> 
That's and I'm cool. like, well, son, I don't know if we can. I can take you tomorrow. But you were talking about that last time I was up here. Yeah. Did you take him yet? I have not even been mm. able to take him yet. Hey, Mark, as an active member, I would have taken him back. And, oh, and he hasn't excellent. stopped. He hasn't stopped talking about it. And nice work, you know, Kurt. he just. I got you. It's one of them things, like you know, I think people, if they would go and they would check it out and they would realize what what there is to offer. It, they would be really, really pleasantly surprised by what you guys do out they there. They would. So, they would. Yep. The, the, the thing that we say all the time is that people pass by things every day, and they have yeah. no idea what happened yep. there. And it's fascinating. I, now that I'm starting to learn a little bit and a little bit here and a little bit there, I pass those places, and I know what happened there. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's fascinating. Well, how do you how do you know what pieces you're going to put out on in the uh, on the showroom? You know, compared to what you guys. You That's know, our curator's that. job. Okay, that, that, all right. The curator takes care of that, but our number one job with an exhibit is to give them the story. Okay, to have the resources to pass over the story yep. because the stuff is worthless without the story, mm-hmm. yep. and the and the stories aren't as good without. I say stuff with the 3D objects. Yeah. Yep. Well, that and that's that's interesting. You know, we have a little bit of that out at the flea market too, because you know, there's you you see so many pieces out there that's like you don't know. You, I mean, half half the time you don't even know what it is, but you sit there and you and you look at it. You're like, that's kind of cool. What is this? You know, and the vendor will be able to tell you a little bit about what it is, and you know, it's just it's very interesting. You know what all you can actually find out there, and the stories that those items have, and that they tell that you don't know about unless Absolutely. you go out and ask it. Absolutely. And and I think that's what you guys do a great job of at the museum oh, is telling you. that story. So, um, you know, Kirk, I I don't know. I think that uh, we need to go out there and we need to run up those steps and do uh, out by the monument and maybe do a little bit of Rocky Balboa out there or something, right? I think so, but. Is it Rocky Balboa? I think it's it Rocky ba- Balboa. It, Balboa threw me off. And you I'm go sorry. up to the top and like. Yeah, but you know what's interesting? I have never. Now, of course, I know that scene. I've never seen one Rocky film. No, you, come on. Not one. Not one Rocky film. Not one. Wow. Can you um, have can, you seen can you Mark? edit? Can you edit Balboa? that out, please, Titus? Have you seen the ba- Balboa? Ro- is that constricting? Yeah, like the snake. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's, a, that's really bad too. No, no, but, but, that, I but may that have is seen one. That really? is that is one one area too that's right over there. You know, is the is the monument, and you know they you guys. There's a really cool thing that they do. My wife went to um, 9/11, hmm. where they they go they go up up the stairs. They actually have it. Um, oh yeah, counted this... how many stairs are in the the um, the. What do you call those? Equivalent. They they do an equivalency of of the the twin towers. Yeah, the twin that the were twin knocked towers. Down yep, on nine eleven. Yep, and so they go. They they do. Uh, I mean, it's silent, but you do. Uh, you do a march up and down the stairs, and and um, it's really nice. And the firemen really are cool. in full equipment. Yes, oh, they they wow. have the coat. I mean, they have whatever they have on when they go to a fire. Yeah, They're just like the guys on that day. Yeah, isn't it crazy? It's been what twenty one years ago. It is crazy. Like I, I, that's one of those things I'm, you know where, where you're sitting, right when it happened. I was only three years old uh, when that happened. Wow, you were in so, college. Just kidding. All right, <laughs> thanks, um, Kirk. You're welcome. But no, it's just that that's really nice that they you know pay tribute to all those men and women and that they they do that. Yep. Now there is no sled riding on those hills, correct? There is no sled as, riding. Okay, I, as a kid, I we would now. But you, I have people sled ridden. Yes, sled I have sled. Ridden? I have sled ridden sled road. there. Oh yes. Now the kids Row can still eggs. ride down on their um, on their butts going down the. They do that too. Right. Yeah, and it's that's why dis- the black marks are there. So the next time we go, I'll discourage my kids from doing it. So the black yeah. marks ah, are partially. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mark. It's Jeez. a tomb, and it's a a very solemn place. It is absolutely. There should be respect there. You're raising delinquents over here, Kirk. Oh, gosh, I'm just I talking. Call hey, my wife. Hey, Kirk. Kirk. Um, <laughs> Can we finish off with your trivia? I do. Ha- I do want to. I've been curious a little bit about what <laughs> kind of questions you had there. One more sure. thing about the sliding is that there was a lady the other day that said, "My grandfather, part of my grandfather's genes are still on that slide." It's not a slide, but it it it's a coping stone. But well, isn't that interesting? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not all bad. It's not all bad. No. Just the black marks and 
Being disrespectful well, is bad, but yeah. other than yeah, that, no, I mean, sorry. On I'm silver lining, geez. I'm trying here. On to the trivia. <laughs> All right, moving right along. Our membership is <clears throat> going to get cut off. <laughs> Why can't I come in, guys? <laughs> this is going to be very yay I or nay. I see you in there, Mark. Right, so I see let, you. So I'll, I'll read one, Mark, and you have to Romper, let me know if it's true or not. Romper, stomper, domper, do. That's not right at all. <laughs> so it says he he. I'll, I'll just read what we have. He was the fifth president from Ohio in 28 years. So was there a lot of presidents born in Ohio? We have eight. We claim eight. Total. eight. Interesting. We have claim now. Now, not born. Um, we claim uh. we claim that they were. They have some kind of connection. They weren't all born here. They didn't all die here. But they have some type of connection to Ohio that we claim them okay. as Ohio presidents. So that, that's you were wrong on that then. So okay, okay. moving on. So Google's. He wrong. was the first president to ride in an automobile. He was. Oh yes. oh wow! Batting, Absolutely. That in five hundred. Congratulations. He, he talks about uh, Zebulon Davis, which I'd love to have that name. If I had a kid, I'd call him Zebulon. I'd call him Z. Zebulon. Zeb. Zeb. Here. Zeb. <laughs> Zeb. I like it. Zeb Davis. Zebediah. That was his nickname, Jeez. Zeb Davis. Oh, was it? Yeah, he was okay. a cool guy. That is a good right. name. He was the originator. They started it in a quarry right there downtown Canton uh, on North Market. They had a quarry around his house, I believe. I could be wrong. Other people are cringing right now. Um, but then he, oh, Google's wrong, he started so. what became the Diamond Portland uh, Company, cement company. That's and crazy. the the other thing was that it was a steam car in, I can't tell you all the details of that. I don't have that at the top of my head. But it was a steam car in Washington D.C. Okay, around the White but House. But he was, I believe. yeah. But so he would have been the one of the, the first president in a automobile. That's crazy. Yes. yes. All right. Let's see. We have got. <clears throat> now this is big information. Uh, Shocking. First lady Ida McKinley. Yes. Right? She did not like the color yellow. She did not like yellow at all. She didn't want any yellow dresses. So that's dresses. true. That is true. That is true. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Wow. <laughs> How? Why would she be so, like... I grew up in a yellow house, and I don't like yellow either. Oh, so... But she was just very vocal about that yellow. That was her... Yeah, that was her preference. I like oh. all colors. Yeah, yeah. You you don't we... mind yellow? <laughs> I don't mind yellow at all. That's cool. I can't. I got to... <laughs> I, I was. I can't say it. Okay. <laughs> okay, go. Moving on. We're moving on. All right, so, ready? After President McKinley was shot, the crowd grabbed his assassin and began to beat him. That's right. Really? Um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. That's um, with President. That's what's going to happen. Well, plus, it was probably in downtown Canton. Sheesh. You don't want to mess <laughs> with any president. That's not funny, is it, either? Oh, wow. <laughs> Down. That's, a, that's a bad it's joke. A, it was actually in Buffalo, New York. But <laughs> if you're from downtown Canton, we Mark's love like you. Like Kirk, it wasn't even in the state of Ohio. So they, so after he was shot, they. Well, the the short story of it is that he, okay, so the 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 shots ring out, and he is shot with two bullets, and one account is that one of the bullets ricochets off of one of his buttons, another one that that it is. It goes into him in his shoulder, but there's different accounts. The other one that we know for sure, because of the doctors, it went into his belly. It went into his oh, okay. abdomen. And yes, there was a there was a guard that was African American that uh, went after the the assailant, mm -hmm. went after the the gunman, uh, Leon Solgosh. Oh, and he was Polish. He was a factory worker from Cleveland, and he was. He was not going after President McKinley personally. He was going after the have versus the have-nots. Oh, interesting. He, he was a factory worker, and he was influenced, and, and mm -hmm. he was an anarchist. Okay. Now, what you're getting to about um, people running after, or people starting to go toward mm -hmm. the, the gun, the shooter... Um, McKinley actually, as he's, he, there are accounts that they sat him in a chair right away, but McKinley, as they're dragging Solgosh away, McKinley okay. says, with bullets in him, don't harm him uh, or don't, don't hurt him. So he's thinking about the person that just wow. shot him. Wow. That's how much of a, uh, that, that's the character wow. of William McKinley. 
Wow. Well, I think that that's like a perfect, perfect story to, to wrap, wrap up on. But, you know, I think, you know, unless you have one other thing you wanted to mention. No. Okay. No, but now, but, oh no, go ahead. Then I'll say one more thing. No, I, I, the one thing I do want to mention though, is, you know, just from talking here with Mark, I mean, Mark is very, very knowledgeable on this stuff and, and, you know, to go out there to, to the museum and to check, check it out, you know, there's so much that you can learn and, um, the people there, they know what, they know what they're talking about and, you know, and they're always, you guys are always willing to help out and, and give information. Absolutely. And, and I think that's, that's what makes you guys so special and unique is that you guys want to tell that story and you want to, you want to hold on to that story, um, to preserve it for, like you said, the McKinley family. And, yes. and um, I think we, that's that's very important. I think you do a great job at it. We don't want to do things that are exciting or, right. or uh, dramatic. Right. We want to think, we want to, we want to tell you a story that is correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then the God is the greatest dramatist. Amen. He takes care of that. The, yep. He cares, takes care of the drama part of it. And it's yep. always, it's always fascinating and dramatic. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and you know when you go visit the museum, and obviously um, the the monument is up on the hill. You know, and and, and like you said earlier, you know it, it is a somber place. You know, that's the that's a burial site, and yes, it, it is because um, Ida and um, President McKinley they they went through some things because they lost a daughter at what like four year, four months old. Um, four months and twenty two days was their second daughter Ida, main, named after mom. Oh, okay. And the, are the children, they're buried there as well? They are. Uh, Katie's the other one, the first one. Catherine, named after her grandmother. And if you go in, when you go in the double doors mm-hmm. to go into the monument, you will see the sarcophagi at the top, and you, you raise your eyes to the president and to the first lady. Then you walk around that sarcophagi. It's a, it's a green, it's green granite. It's one piece of green granite. You walk around wow. and you see the headstones in the north wall mm-hmm. where Katie and Ida are buried. Wow. Or entombed. Right. Well, I mean, that's just crazy. It is. That's crazy. It's history. in our backyard, man. It, it, yeah, it's, it's right in our backyard. One of the so. cool things is when you go in the basement and there's nothing to see, but it's just the meaning. You go in there in the basement and there's, there's sections uh, that you can go out to the... It, it has a double wall construction, so it has the the uh, granite on the outside, and it it's mainly held up by bricks. And if you go in between those, you can look up and you can see the concrete that's holding up the girls' ca- caskets. Wow! Wow! Unbelievable! So it, just having that very meeting. cool. Well, Mark, we I want to thank you for joining us today, and and we really appreciate it. And you know, every time I'm with you, I I feel like I'm dumber and dumber because of no the not knowledge at all. that you have is, not is just out, out of this world so we appreciate everything that that you do and um the partnership that we have and thanks for coming out and being I part of the show yeah, i appreciate being able to speak on behalf of the museum and and i thank you all for this opportunity yeah and don't you know seriously if, even if you're from not around this area you know go check out the museum they they do have a lot of great things to offer um especially if you have kids and if they've, they've ever been you know, entrenched with this uh, historical stuff from Stark County. And there's a there's a great kid area downstairs with, you know, dinosaur fossils and a science area. So it's it's we love taking our kids there. It's a wonderful place. So, you know, be sure to check them out. Uh, but, yeah, thank you very much, Mark. You're you're Absolutely. you're awesome. And we really appreciate you. So um, until next time.